Trishel Gleason, Assistant City Clerk, you are hereby directed to call a special session of the City Council to be held on Monday, September 18th, 2023 at 5.45 p.m. in the historic Federal Building for the purpose of conducting a work session on Travel Dubuque Update. Good evening and welcome to a special session of the Dubuque City Council for September 18th, 2023. As a reminder to viewers and listeners, due to the nature of tonight's meeting topic, public input is not accepted. However, you may contact the City Council directly from the City's webpage at www.cityofdubuque.org slash council contacts. Attendance tonight is Mayor Cavanaugh. Here. Council members Farber. Here. Jones. Here. Resnick. Here. Roussel. Here. Sprank. Here. Wethel. Here. City Manager Van Milligan. Here. City Attorney Brumwell. Here. All we'll right. be go, go ahead and begin the work session. Okay. And I will turn it right over to Mr. Keith Ray from Travel Dubuque. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, City Council, and, and City Staff, it's a pleasure to be here this evening on this beautiful September evening. Uh, sorry, it's been a little bit of delay on that. I was supposed to be here a few weeks ago, but had a, a family, uh, lost my brother, and uh, appreciate you guys being flexible with that and uh, allowing me to come back and present. I, I wanna start off tonight, I think the, you know, the first element that we show on the screen is the, uh, the Fourth Street elevator. Um, and I think that's just an iconic vision. This is the cover of our travel guide. And uh, we've got uh, two uh, individuals that have been with us for uh, travel guides. Uh, they've been with us for about 10 years now, uh, bringing our travel guides not only throughout the, the Dubuque the County, Dubuque area, but the whole region and such. They've gone through more travel guides this year than we ever have before. And I really attribute a lot to that photo. I really do. People just feel it, you know, it is just absolutely beautiful and it really is a big part of Dubuque and the tri-state area. So that's very exciting. Our staff, you know most of us, but I just wanted to just refresh everybody's memory. As you know, we have an absolutely amazing staff, very dedicated to Dubuque, Dubuque County. A lot of these individuals have been with me a long time. Uh, some of the newer people that have come on board, John Sutter uh, is Vice President Field of Dreams Operation, Noah Westhoff. Noah is our sports and event manager who replaced Tyler Doherty, and just been an incredibly uh, uh, amazing asset to our team and then Senator Kerry Kalker, our Vice President of Community Engagement. Uh, but that's our team. These are the individuals that work on a daily basis to promote Dubuque in the tri-state area as a destination for everything from groups, families, events and such and I think they do an absolutely amazing job. I'm going to give you some highlights of what has happened so far in this season and then some things that are coming up. Uh, this presentation was put together for a few weeks ago. Some things have happened since then. I'll give you updates on that, but it's very exciting. So uh, one of the big things that Taylor and Willie uh, from our marketing department have put together, they started this last fall, and this is an adventure guide. It really allows us to be able to showcase what we have to offer in Dubuque and the tri-state area in the uh, fall and the winter. It's a two-sided uh, publication. We also did it for spring and summer. Been extremely well received. So all those visitors guide that I mentioned that go out, we specifically put this in as a supplement, but it's also available and goes out throughout the, all of our mailings, all of our, all of our different collateral that goes out. And you can see how it continues to evolve and continues to grow. And it allows us from a marketing standpoint to really focus in on what makes Dubuque unique. And that can be a unique restaurant. It could be Sundown, obviously. You know, Sundown continues to do extremely well for us in the wintertime. That's an amazing story within itself coming out of COVID and how that facility, which has been there 50 years now, and it's an absolute blessing for us, but just has grown and just exploded and continues to really grow. This allows us to really market and focus in on just a unique type of uh, activity that we have. So this is, continues to do very well, and it's something that Taylor and Willie uh, put a lot of time and effort into it. Uh, then our ad buy, just to show the different areas where we're at, the different growth that we're seeing in regards to our website, our Instagram, our Facebook. I know I've talked about this to this group in the past and individually. Uh, bringing Willie Tiggis on board has been just a, a really huge asset for our team. Uh, his ability with social media, as that continues to evolve and grow, really makes us even more of a dynamic marketing presence for Dubuque and the Tri-State. 
our group tours, you see these buses everywhere. I was just in Ireland, just got back from there, and uh, we were, there was areas where I would see over 200 buses in a day in a certain area. I was very envious of that. I told <laughs> Becky that we want, to, we want to get to that. She's kind of looked at me like, I don't know, boss, we'll see. <laughs> but we do, as you can imagine, we are very much a, a destination for the buses. It's specifically this time of the year, you're going to see them up and down Main Street, all over at the hotels, at the Arboretum, at the River Museum, at the Field of Dreams and such, and Becky does an absolutely amazing job with this. And it really is that touch. You know, she goes above and beyond to create specific itineraries for these various bus groups. She puts caramels together, everybody loves those, right? Meets the buses, talk to them, really showcases what we have to offer here in Dubuque in our region and such. And I think it's that really that hands-on that separates us as a community and brings us above the rest of the uh, rest of the other areas. Now, this is an area, and I know I talk about this with the group. Really, group tours. You know, I've been doing this stuff for a long time. I've been with Travel Dubuque for almost 18 years. During that time frame, you know, buses were a big part of what we did. A lot of our peers, a lot of our competitors, they really don't see the amount of activity that we do with the buses. For us, this time of the year, midweek, bringing these groups into, once again, all of our partners, whether or not it's a lodging partner, a restaurant, or one of the attractions is huge for us. And it's a significant amount of business, and I'm really proud of our staff and what they do with this. And then we've got the meetings. Julie Cronlaugh, our Vice President of Sales, does an absolutely amazing job. You all know Julie, she's incredibly dedicated to our team and to our efforts and such. But just give you a little bit of an idea of what we've had and what's coming up here in, uh, in the meetings element down at the Grand River Center and our other partners in the area and such. So one that we're very excited about in September, we've got the Iowa Grocery Industry Association and then the Iowa Library Association will be in town in October. So very excited to start to see that business coming back out of the pandemic, right? Because of everything that we had from the individual travelers, group travel, even the excursion, the meeting element has probably been the thing that's come back the slowest, but it is coming back. And you know we're very excited about that. We're very excited about what's happening down the Grand River Center and such also, so. River boats, I think this is the thing that we've seen the most growth in over the last probably three to four years. It's absolutely amazing. All the different river boats that are coming in, docking down at the American Trust Plaza, coming into our community, once again, with the, 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 the buses. They're all very specific to their cruise line. We have very specific step-on guides that are able to go on those or really showcase our area. But you can just see the growth and such. Good news is the water levels have been high enough so far this season compared to last year that we've been able to get everybody in, get them docked, and get them out in the area and really showcase what we have. Because our hope, and we've seen it, is people come on these boats and then they end up coming back again and they'll stay, they can even come back and, and live and such. So it's just a great, another opportunity for Dubuque. What makes us a unique destination, once again, is that river right out front. And the ability for these guests to come up and really see what we have to offer here is amazing. And they, they're very much, they're thrilled by it. I talked to one of my ghost players today. Um, he does a lot of the buses out at the Field of Dreams with the excursion. He said, when those guests come out there, it's absolutely amazing what a good mood they're in. How much that they love, you know, the, the ability to come up the river, but the ability to get on that bus and come out into the region and really see what Iowa in this area has to offer. And he said, they're always in a good mood. They always want to talk to you. They always want to take your, their picture with them and stuff like that. And that's not normally always the case, but it really says a lot about the, uh, the, the experience that the riverboats people are having. The USS LST, this is one I talked about. Uh, this was put together before, as you saw last week. The boat was in, in uh, port. Uh, we had over 12,000 unique individuals toured the boat during that time frame. The weather was perfect. You know, it was in the 70s, nice and cool. The time before when we had them in 18, it was rather hot and such. And we had to bring a lot of water down, but it's just an absolutely amazing 
uh, facility for the people to be able to come and see in port. And people literally come from all over. And the stories that they have of their relatives that were part, you know, that served on the boat. We even had uh, one individual that there was a, a young lady, 98 years old, served on the boat and came to it and such. So a lot of different stories. Julie and Becky and, and Noah did a, just an absolutely amazing job with this. They were boots on the ground down there throughout the entire time frame and really made sure that everybody's experience, not just the people that are going on the boat, but the crew themselves had just a top, top of the line uh, experience when they were here. And that's significant because they want to come back. Because once again, and that's a, it's, a common, it's a common line I'll use, my staff really does do an amazing job of going above and beyond for everybody to make sure that their time here in Dubuque and the Tri-State is about as good as it gets. And I can't say enough about the time and effort that Julie, Becky, and Noah put in you know, for this and such. And it's just a great showcase for our area. Then Noah, once, Noah is, uh, he's an uh, energetic young man. I don't know if all of you've got a chance to meet him yet, but he's just been a, a, a tremendous addition to our staff. Uh, just a very hard worker, always in a good mood, even working with me. It's hard to believe, but we've had a lot of different activity going on throughout the summer. He graduated from the University of Iowa in May and really has hit the ground running, probably is just starting to catch his breath right now. One of the big events that we had, we wanted to keep that brand going. As you know, we created this Beyond the Game event around the Major League Baseball when they're here in the tri-state area. For everybody that you know is coming to the game, but all the other people that don't get tickets, just to showcase what we have. We continue that this year, and I think one of the things that I was incredibly um, moved by was the USA Patriots. You know, we had brought them here last year. Uh, this year, they loved it so much that they brought their clinic here to Dubuque, stayed in the port down at the, the Grand Harbor. They were here for about six days and absolutely loved it. And these are, these, uh, the USA Patriots, I know I've talked a little bit about, but these are uh, mil former military personnel, men and women, that have lost a limb in service of our nation. And they go around the United States doing clinics and camps for children that have also lost a limb or have some sort of, uh, you know, a, uh, a condition and such. So they brought in 26 of these children and their parents, paid for all of it, and they did this clinic. And it was absolutely, it was just uh, an amazing event for all, all of us to be a part of. And then they, uh, they're very competitive, the USA Patriots. <laughs> The Ghost players beat them last year, and they wanted a, a rematch, so we played them again. It was a breathtaking night at the Field of Dreams, everybody. It was just gorgeous. Uh, beautiful sunset, and the Ghost players did prevail. So now they, I, they want to rematch with us once again. So that's a relationship that continues to grow, and it's something we're very proud of. As you know, with the Ghost players, um, I've been with them since the beginning. started that organization in 1989. One of the things that we are the most proud of, of everything that we've done, is what we did with the military for all those years when we toured overseas. So for us, this is a natural to be working with the USA Patriots. But it's just a, an amazing group, and it's something we're looking to create a long-term uh, relationship with. I'd mentioned John early on, John Sutter. We brought John on in May when uh, the uh, Travel Dubuque was uh, brought on to manage the Field of Dreams. Uh, we are managing all aspects of the movie site itself, the tourist destination, also with the new stadium that we're looking to create and the other development and such. So John, I've had a long time relationship with John and various entities. Actually, John was chair of the Trout Dubuque Board at one point. He was also chair of America's River Corporation Board. So he's been my boss at various times. Now I'm his boss. So it's kind of how that wheel turns. But we've been thrilled to bring him on. Incredibly, this man has as much experience in the tourism industry as any of us. And he's been just a, uh, a great asset for our team and all of our efforts out at the field and such. The youth tournaments, one of the things that we were brought into with this, the Field of Dreams Youth Tournaments. And I know, you know, you, this group, I've talked about this in the past and such, but youth sports are recession proof and they're pandemic proof. Even through COVID, they never missed a beat, continue to grow 
continue to flourish. We're seeing that, and it's absolutely amazing. It was a thrill for us to be a part of that this season. A lot of work, got to be honest with you. You know, we had over 370 teams from across the country and such. And But just to see the excitement of these teams and their parents and their family that comes here and just their ability, you know, not only for the baseball component, but just to see what we all have to, to offer. But you can see the amount of people. It was very busy during those time frames, not only in, you know, Dyersville in that area, but the entire county. I mean, we were seeing at Bright Box uh, that, you know, they were up there, you know, uh, eating dinner and that up in the downtown area here in Dubuque, and they're all staying. We did a, a post survey and over 80% of the teams stay right here in Dubuque and such, so that's very exciting. But just to give you kind of an idea of where they're coming from, I think this graphic is, is a very impactful, just to show where the teams and where they're coming from throughout the United States. So this is an element that we're looking to grow and continue to develop and really to double the amount of teams over the next five years, you know, with the potential new complex out on site. And just the amount of activity and business this brings to our region is just staggering. And something we're very excited about and something that, you know, we're putting a lot of time and effort into to make sure that the product that we're developing for them, but the entire region is second to none. And then this is Iowa Ballpark. We talked about this numerous times. This is the nonprofit organization that was created to build the, the multi-purpose stadium at the field. Now that's a work in progress. So some of you, some of you are on that board with me and such. It's a ten-person board. We continue to work daily on that. It uh, a lot of time, a lot of effort, but things are moving ahead very well with the stadium. I'm very excited. We've had some tremendous developments over the last uh, few weeks, and uh, that continues to move. With our goal is for that to be up and operational by the summer of 2025, and then for us to start hosting numerous events there during after that. And this gives you kind of a rendering overview of that. I know you've seen this in the past, but I just wanted to put, put it on once again to give you an idea of what this will look like you know, once this entire facility is created. I love this. This is the Hall of Fame Plaza with the new potential stadium. As you're coming down, there's been seven individuals that played Major League Baseball and they're in the Hall of Fame from Iowa. And this will give you that view as you can come down. As you can see, once again, the corn is our biggest prop. I mean, I told somebody that a couple weeks ago. The corn's the biggest star out there, right? I mean, that's what people, we probably we have the most famous cornfield in the world, and we're really taking advantage of that and showcasing. You can see the corn comes all the way up to the stadium, surrounds the stadium. So you're going to have the ability, if you're a high school team, if you're a collegiate team, if you're a professional player, you're going to have the ability to hit that ball into the cornfield. So we're very excited about the whole layout, what it looks like, and just how it will showcase you know, not only our area, but the entire state. And this gives you a view from out, out the left field uh, where they're actually from right field where the players would walk in, but just giving you that entire rural landscape that uh, I think that's one of the unique things that I've found you know, incredibly um, moving for me with this whole, you know, through this process from, from 2020, 2021, 2022, and now what we're looking to develop is building this world-class facility in the cornfield, right? And for these people to come from all over the world and be able to experience it. I was in a little shop in Ireland, I have to tell you this story. I had a pin on that said Field of Dreams, and this couple came up to me and they said, have you been there? And I said, well, actually, I kind of run it. <laughs> and a group came over, and they were from Germany, they were from Italy, they were from all over. And they said, that's on our bucket list to go to. And I'm like, well, I could help you out and get you there. <laughs> so it was really something. And it just shows that no matter where you're at, how, that, the, how the field of dreams really has an impact throughout the entire world. It's amazing. But I just want to thank you and open it up for any questions that the group has any at this point. Well, thank you very much, Keith. Every time you come here, I just want to get up and run out of the room. <laughs> just go run to the Field of Dreams and start hanging out there and all the exciting things that are going on. So what kind of questions or discussion do we have this evening? 
Jones, go ahead. Pretty hard to follow Keith. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you do keep us very well informed, which is one of the reasons you probably hear us so silent right now. But um, it is, it, you, you bring some really great information here, and um, you track some really great statistics. The number of caramels we hand out, for example. I do yeah. love that one. Yeah. But um, shocked to see the number of people coming off those boats. Yeah. I and mean, that's just, that is fantastic. You know, and it continues to grow, too. I mean, you know, I know we've, the city, I applaud. I always say that, but it is true. All the effort that the city and the staff do to make everything, you know, just make that, all that a reality. You know, even like with the USS LST, you know, we worked hand in hand with city staff to have those spud bars. So both, you know, because we had multiple boats coming in at the same time, right? And it's a problem, but you, everybody works together to make the best case scenario, and they do. And I just have to really thank, and we continue to hear the how beautiful it is with the flowers and everything. I mean, people talk about that all the time. And that's a real tribute to council and to the city staff. I mean, and we've heard that for a long time. We have an absolutely gorgeous community here. It is amazing. You know, when you look at everything and just the amount of effort and time that's put in to make it such, it's just a real tribute to everyone. Yeah. Well, it definitely is a team effort, that's for sure. Yeah. Everybody working together to make this happen. But, you know, you mentioned earlier in your uh, presentation about being envious of some of the buses you saw when you were out traveling yourself. But I know a lot of people who are envious of you and your team and yeah. the work that you're doing. So thank you very much for doing it. I know you're working really, really hard. Yeah. Probably a little harder than you need to sometimes or even should. Like maybe, you know, need to step back every once in a while. But we really do appreciate it. It's you, a team It's a team effort yeah. across the board. And I can't reiterate that enough, you know. We taught you, you know, about the caramels. You know, Becky's just doing that and going out and just that hands-on. That makes a difference for those groups, whether or not they look to come here and come back and such. And that's just really the mentality that, that the, our organization has. So it's, um, I'm very appreciative of my staff and all the time and effort they put in. That's fantastic. Well, thank you very much for being here with us this evening and sharing all this great information. We look forward to seeing you around very frequently and seeing right. you here again soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. There being no further business in this work session, we will be adjourned until 6.30.